my thanks to Megan and Sharon for the prelude. That is a, dare I say, a foretaste, perhaps, of the concert this afternoon at 3 o'clock. Welcome to Worship at the Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit. A special welcome to all who have gathered here in the sanctuary floor, those who have joined us on our Zoom platform, and those who may be worshiping with us for the first time. I see you have a delightful picture of my head. There we go. You're never quite sure what you're going to get. It's just kind of fun. I'd like to thank all those who attended and made possible our Blessing of the Animals service yesterday. We had approximately 15 dogs, one cat, two turtles, and one hermit crab. And at least that many of caregivers as well. Uh, we acknowledge with thanks the presence of Charlotte Gross, who is here today. Charlotte is a member of Holy Spirit and is also a volunteer mission interpreter for our Northeastern Pennsylvania Synod. Charlotte will participate in the sermon today, and we thank her for being with us and also for her work in our synod on everyone's behalf. Today at 3 p.m., as I mentioned, here in the sanctuary is a benefit concert featuring Megan McCormick and Sharon McCabe. There will be a free offering, a free will offering received during the course of that service to benefit the laundry on Linden, an outreach to the homeless population of Allentown. It's also asked that those who are attending, if possible, to bring a new pair of socks for distribution at that location. Mark your calendar for October 22nd in the afternoon, trunk or treat. Uh, trunk sponsors are still needed. Please check Holy Happenings for the sign-up instructions and for all the pertinent information regarding that event. With sorrow, we acknowledge the death of Teresa Bashish, and we ask you to kindly remember her family, Paul, that is, her son and his family, in your prayers. That concludes my announcement and my opportunity to introduce our final of four stewardship videos. Would you please rise for our greeting and prayer of the day? Is that me? No. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also Let us pray. God of wondrous love and glorious deeds, shower us with your love and quench our thirst for grace 
Strengthen us with your spirit of power and embolden us to live our faith. Humble us with the example of Christ and remind us to regard one another as beloved children of God. Amen. Welcome to Bible Sunday, a day of celebration when our congregation helps parents to keep their baptismal promise to place in their child's hand God's holy word. During the gathering song, the following young people who are present at this service are invited to come forward with their parents to receive their Bibles. Uh, parents, I ask that you receive the Bible from Mrs. Kaler and Amber O'Brien. And um, during the Bible presentation, you will hand the Bible then to your child. Receiving the beginner's Bible today, Everett, Kenneth, Victor, Annalise, Bill, Ellie, Andy, Sally, Lillian, Cooper, James, Ada, and Eric. Receiving the Deep Blue Kids Bible, Ellison, RJ, Gabriella, Emma, Madeline, Amelia, and Nicholas. And receiving the New International Version Bible, Anna Jo, Asher, Alexis, Maxwell, Delaney, Alyssa, Thomas, Bennett, Autumn, Reagan, Story, Evelyn and Angelina. In Christ, it wasn't so long ago that many of you stood with a baby in your arms and made a promise on behalf of your child to faithfully bring them to the services of God's house, teach them the Lord's Prayer, Creed, and Ten Commandments. You also promised that as they grew in years, you would place in their hands the Holy Scriptures and provide for their instruction in the Christian faith that living in the covenant of their baptism and in communion with the church, your children may lead godly lives. 
Parents, do you intend to fulfill these promises? If so, respond, I do. Parents, you may place the child's Bible in their hands. And I'll ask you to turn and face the congregation. Let us pray. We rejoice with you in this step in your faith journey. We pray God will guide you, your family, and our congregation as you use this Bible in your home, in your Sunday school classes, and in worship. We will learn together and grow in our love for God's word. Amen. Let's give a clap and get reading. Thank you. A reading from Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins who shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they have committed, they shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions. Otherwise, iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me and get yourself a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from Philippians. If then there is any comfort in Christ, any consolation from love, any partnership in the spirit, be of the same mind, having some love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambis ambition or empty conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he existed in the form of God, did not reg regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, assuming human likeness. And being found in appearance as a human, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him even more highly and gave him the name that is above every other name. So at that name given to Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work on your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both 
to will and to work for his good pleasure. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. from Matthew, the 21st chapter. Open our hearts. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things and, and who gave you this authority? And Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. If I tell you the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued one with another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regarded John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second son and said to the same. And he answered him, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? And they said, the first. And Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to, to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the good news. Thanks be to God. I should say one program note. Our reader today was Suzanne Went, who is a consistent presence in our Zoom audience and was happy to participate in the reading through a pre-recorded uh, program of that session. So that was who that was. She is part of our Zoom congregation. Thank you, Suzanne. Would you join me in prayer, please? Lord God, our way, our life, our light, keep us forever faithful, trusting solely in your word. Amen. Today's sermon presentation is sort of a hybrid in its approach in that there will be two speakers, Charlotte Gross and me. This message is part of a larger stewardship focus that will culminate in next week's Commitment Sunday service with the Reverend Dr. Michael Bentham as our guest preacher. That week and that Sunday will also be an opportunity for members to receive estimate of giving cards for 2024. Today, Charlotte will offer insights to the benefit of our financial gifts, our mission support, our benevolence to the Northeastern Pennsylvania Synod, how it affects our synod, our country, and indeed how our gifts affect the world. It's important, delightful, and all inspiring to realize how our mission support dollars have worldwide impact. My hope is we will all gain an insight to the goodness derived from our gifts to mission, gifts that are a reflection of what we ourselves have already received from God through Jesus Christ. And now I invite Charlotte to come to the pulpit. Good morning. As Pastor Mark explained, I've been doing this for the last few years, visiting other churches, 
and having this chance to share with our members the impact that you make from our giving beyond our congregation to the ELCA. And today I get to do it at home. I co-coordinate this with another wonderful lady, and I'm learning as I go. In 2022, the congregations of the Northeast Pennsylvania Synod contributed a total of over $1.8 million to undesignated mission support. Maybe in our budget it's benevolence, that line item, one line item. I'm going to try to unpack that line item, help you make a personal connection to that giving that you do. 53% of the giving that we give to the Northeast Pennsylvania Synod stays in the Synod to uh, fund ministries in the Synod. They also have grants available for churches starting new ministries. And 47% goes on to the ELCA to support many various ministries. One in 50 Americans is impacted by Lutheran social ministry organizations. One in 50. And locally, some that we're familiar with would be Good Shepherd Rehab Network. I've been there. Diacon Lutheran Social Ministries. Mission support giving from congregations helps young adults at Kutztown University, not even a Lutheran college, as well as Muhlenberg College, which is considered still a Lutheran college, to be in community and fellowship together through the campus ministries. Mission support giving helps Lutheran Camp, Bear Creek Camp in the Poconos, provide a variety of edu environmental education programs. We support seven seminaries and 26 colleges and universities with our mission support giving. Our mission support giving helps to provide for a ministry of federal chaplains, including on the Navy hospital ships used during the COVID pandemic. In 2022, ELCA World Hunger assisted in 67 countries and 43 U.S. states and territories not just giving aid, but helping people towards sustainability, like teaching them how to farm. And do you have a picture? <laughs> picture one. In 2022, Lutheran Disaster Response assisted in 42 countries and 26 U.S. states and territories, often among the last relief agency to leave after assisting people after a disaster. In June 2022, the International Women's Leaders Program celebrated its fourth full class of five scholars graduating from ELCA colleges and universities. Scholarship program for international women. The Fund for Leaders provided nearly three and a half million in scholarship assistance to 375 ELCA seminary students during 2022-2023 academic year. New ELCA congregations are starting throughout the United States and the Caribbean and in nearly every synod. With 322 new starts currently in development and 33 begun during 2022. More than 70% of total new starts are in ethnically diverse communities. And here we have our beloved Dr. Mark Jacobson. In 2022, 131 long-term missionaries were at work in 45 countries around the world, and 24 young adults in global missions volunteers serving in four country programs. And what we do in this role is tell stories like our founder Jesus did. So I'm going to read part of a story to you from Living Lutheran, picture three, called Tenth on the Tenth. 
On September 10th, the ELCA celebrated the 10th anniversary of God's Work Our Hands Sunday. That was last week here. An annual day of service in which congregations come together to lend a hand, help build a future, and repair their communities. It was introduced in 2013 as a special day of service across the church to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the ELCA's formation. Service in the community wasn't a new concept in the ELCA. A church that is grounded in loving and serving the neighbor and in striving for justice and wholeness in the world. God's Work Our Hands Sunday is one of the ways in which we live out our purpose to invite more people to know Jesus and discover community, justice, and love, said Elizabeth Eaton, that's our ELCA national presiding bishop. When one congregation gathers to serve its neighbors, they are one church helping in their community. But this is also the entire church. This is how we are church together, responding to God's call to love and serve. Recalling the initial day of service, John Anderson said, we were worshiping through our service in the community, so we were a visible church. Anderson, who is currently director of rural ministry at Luther Seminary in Minnesota, served as bishop of the Southwestern Minnesota Synod for eight years. The idea that we could have a service day across the ELCA, he added, that local churches could decide what they wanted to do based on the needs of their community and the capacity of their congregation, and that they could place when they did it on the calendar to fit their needs, all of that helped to take off. As it expanded, congregations saw the opportunity to partner with other congregations, social ministry organizations, and interfaith groups in the community, Anderson said. God's work our hands. Sunday has been like yeast to help the congregational mission awareness grow. The meaningful mission and impact that congregations experienced in 2013 made it evident that the effort would become an annual event. Bright yellow t-shirts designed especially for the day added to the enthusiasm. Although we do service outreach a lot in our congregation, I remember thinking that the yellow shirts were what made it seem special, really made us unified. It emphasized how many people were all in this together, said Stephen Bond, pastor of Advent Lutheran Church in Ohio. When we started reading reports of other churches across the country, it was just a great feeling to know that we were part of something much larger than ourselves. Another meaningful outcome is how intergenerational relationships develop and deepen. It's a great experiment to try to put young and older people together to see what develops from that, Anderson said. If you sit and paint picnic tables like I did with people for about two hours, you get a sense of who people are that you're working with. Bond agreed. It became one of our guiding principles that everything we did was to focus on being intergenerational. God's Work Our Hands Sunday was our first intentional way of doing that. During the COVID-19 pandemic, many congregations continued caring for their communities on the day of service. They organized projects for individuals and families that were virtual, outdoors, physically distanced, or drive through while 2023 looks different than 2020, there are still unique challenges in our communities where we can represent God's hand in caring for people and creation, said Susan Brown, leader of ministry communications and coordination at New Life Lutheran Church in Illinois. One of those new challenges is just getting people to connect in person again. Whether that is bringing people together to serve or partnering with other community groups to work together, God's work isn't limited to only what we as one congregation can do. We joyfully anticipate where we might be led to new opportunities to serve and new people to connect with. We oftentimes end up creating the church to take care of things inside the church. And that's where most of the energy of the church goes. When actually we're called to be the scattered church, Anderson said. So the church is being the church out at work right now, and people are living their faith in serving, and as God's work is happening through their hands. God loves us. God shows God's grace to us. And then we sing our lives as a hymn of praise to God. So what is God's work our hands Sunday? It's a day we sing our praise to God for God's grace and love. 
And on another topic, an unprecedented, next picture, an unprecedented 103 million people around the world have been forced to leave their homes due to causes such as conflict and persecution, according to the UN Refugee Agency. More than 50% of the world's refugees are children. ELCA World Hunger works around the world to assist people on the move. And in the United States, these are the words of our National Bishop Elizabeth Eaton. Our decades-long work with immigrants and refugees is how we practice our faith in the world. Lutherans started Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service, one of the nine refugee resettlement agencies in the United States. So I'm at the end. We have a handout, two tables in front of the doors and two tables in the back of the doors in the narthex, listing some of these publications if you'd like to look them up and read them. They go to print for us, these stories. And I've just been able to share in 10 minutes a little piece of the countless stories of your impact that go to print for us in such ELCA publications as we showed up on the, on the screens, Living Lutheran, Stories of Faith in Action, Lifelines, Boundless, and in our own Synod News. Thank you for your giving beyond this church. Our Synod Bishop, Christopher DeForest, makes the claim that we are stronger together so we also invite you to support these Stronger Together ministries in prayer. My thanks to Charlotte for the stories that are so informative of our response and of our presence and our, of our faith work in action. The Lutheran organization that I used to work for had a mission statement that began, in response to God's love in Jesus Christ. I always felt that should be the beginning of every congregation, every church organization, and any, every individual church member's mission statement. Because while it's important to support a budget, and for instance, the upkeep of the building or the music and education programs or staff salaries, etc., the core reason we contribute is really in response to what God has already done for us in Jesus Christ. All else flows from that. So as you prayerfully consider your upcoming estimate of giving for the coming months, please hold in your heart this phrase in response to God's love in Jesus Christ. In response to God's love in Jesus Christ. Amen.
remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. We put our trust in you as we pray for the church. Give bishops, pastors, deacons, and teachers the gifts of wisdom and discernment. Be with them in bold truth and faithful witness. God of mercy and compassion, Lead us in your truth as we pray for creation. Empower us to look to the interests of others as we make choices that impact the environment. Summon us to be advocates for healthy waterways, habitats, and air. God of mercy and compassion, lead us in justice as we pray for those in government, the military, and other positions of authority. Give them humble and willing hearts, looking to the needs of others. We pray also for our enemies. God of mercy and compassion, trusting your goodness, we pray for all caregivers and people who are sick or suffering in any way, especially our homebound members, Ray, Dale, Gloria, Judith, Phyllis, Deb, Dick, Gordon, Christopher, Grayson, Jean, Ed, Jean, Noreen, Billy, Trevor, Dawn. Members and friends, Randy, Al, Tara, Judith, Paul, Michael, Helen, Ron and Donna, Gail, Scott, Glenn, Jane, Gail, Dick, Reinhold, G, Donna, Lester, Nancy, Mary Sue, Mark, Val, Denise, Fred, Pete, Wilma, Jim, Tess, Timothy, Kat, Sherry, Nancy, Judith, and Sarah. Give them encouragement and consolation in your presence. God of mercy and compassion. Loving God, our Father, today we celebrate a new beginning, the beginning of a new catechetical year. May the students come to know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Open their hearts and minds to your word, to your Son, to your Spirit, and to one another. God of mercy and compassion, we pray for the church that it may be faithful to the teaching of Jesus and infused in knowledge and understanding of the scriptures. We pray for those who study and teach the Bible and for those who preach. We pray for the young people who have received a Bible today. We pray that God's word and grace may be heard by all who are new to the Christian faith. God of mercy and compassion. Lord, we ask you to hear and answer the prayers of all who are now spoken out loud and those that remain silently within our hearts. We lift them to you now. God of mercy and compassion, we give thanks for all the saints who died secure in the knowledge of salvation, especially Teresa Bashes. Give us fearless, keep us fearless in our faith and certain of your resurrection. God of mercy and compassion, remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our hearts, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us share signs of encouragement, compassion, consolation, and love as we share the peace of Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another.
God loves us and blesses us abundantly, abundantly. And in response to God's love in Jesus Christ, we give back. We are grateful for the ways you share your time and your talents and your treasure. And we encourage you to continue to do so. There are offering plates in the back if you've brought a monetary offering. There are ways to give online. And as always, there are many ways uh, to volunteer within the community and within our church as we carry out Christ's mission in the world. Now, for our musical offering. rise as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the God of unity and love. It is right to our thanks and grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, you created us from dust. You called us to live in your image and be of one mind. Even when we grumbled and complained and we argued and fought, you called us to unity and love. And when we neglected your teachings and turned away from your call, 
you invited us back into your vineyard of mercy and grace. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. In remembrance of your life-giving acts of love and grace, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as children of your love, in union with Christ's love for us and our love for one another, as we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the life and love of Christ, that we may be the body of Christ for the world, redeemed and unified by Christ's love and grace. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with one another, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at your heavenly banquet. Through Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. God in community, holy in one, you are God to whom we pray as Jesus teaches. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the table of unity and love. All are welcome. Be of one mind and one heart. Come, all things are ready. For our Zoom worshipers and those choosing to remain seated, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word. Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all persons. Honor all creation. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the love of God, the light of Christ, and the power and communion of the Spirit be with us all. Amen. <laughs> the Spirit, encourage others in Christ. Go forth to give God's love and encouragement to the world. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.